I'm standing on Victoria Island on the Ottawa River. You can see right across the river is Parliament Hill. Now, we're not going to show it to you for privacy reasons, but just around that tent, Teresa Spence, the Attawapiskat chief, is playing with her grandkids. This is the site of her protest. And right over here inside that teepee is where she has been sleeping for just about a month. And that was just this past Saturday that you made that trip to Ottawa? That's right. So the I Don't Know More movement feels a lot in its germination mm -hmm. like the Occupy movement did, where it was this sort of groundswell, it, it was from the people. Mm -hmm. um, but it's now moved into a different sort of form, mm -hmm. it feels like, where it's really starting to garner national attention and with what the, uh, the chief is doing. When did this... I guess I'm curious, when did this actually get its start and how did we get here? You know, and that's exactly why we wanted to touch this story for ourselves because many of our viewers are probably going to be con seeing this in the news, continue to see it in the news, and we want to give you a broader picture of when this started and where it's going. So I want to give you a roundup of some key dates. So November 10 was when the first Idle No More event was launched. It was launched by four people in Saskatoon, mm -hmm. simply concerned by, the, uh, by Stephen Harper's omnibus bill, trampling over treaty rights. One example is changes to the Indian Act, making it easier to lease reserve lands. Well, this event starts to catch on across the country, and on December 10th, it becomes a movement. They hold their first national day of action. And this is when you start to really see it ramp up. This is when you start to see border crossings across the country being blocked. And a day later, this is when Teresa Spence holds what she calls a hunger strike. So she withholds all solid food. She's simply uh, taking in fish broth. So she holds her hunger strike uh, in, on Victoria Island across from uh, Parliament Hill. Now, on January 7th, this was just yesterday, this is a really key date, that audit, that independent audit of her town showing some financial mismanagement or a, at least a lack of financial due diligence when it comes to about $100 million in government funding. And the reason why that date is important is because this Friday, First Nation leaders will be meeting with the Prime Minister, and that is going to come up. And this uh, January is also going to be the first global day of action for the Idle No More movement. So that's the reason why we wanted to visit Teresa Spence. And here we are on Victoria Island, and you can see that she's become a bit of a hero to her protesters. You can see a lot of them greeting her taking pictures with her, wanting to meet her, wanting to congratulate her for what she's doing. Now, you can also see here that uh, even after about three weeks of just taking fish broth and really tea, she's looking quite well. Uh, she's smiling. She was walking. She was talking to her visitors. But here's a, a, a really interesting note is we were told to meet with Teresa Spence at 1 o'clock. Uh, inside the teepee with her spokesperson, but she's been quite reluctant to talk to media. In fact, we had to wait a, a few hours before we could even talk with her. They didn't want us to talk to her inside the teepee. Uh, they simply gave her a, uh, gave us a few moments with her, and, and they even cut it quite short. Uh, have a listen. Let's take this back to Attawapiskat and, and tell me about tell me about your town. Tell me about what the day-to-day -day life is like there for the average young person. Well, it's all, it's, all, it's not about only Attawapiskat, but other First Nations. We, we face the same common concerns that we, we need to improve. For example, uh, we need better infrastructure for uh, our community, mm. including the uh, housing, and mm. clean water, and better health, mm. and uh, health system, and um, better uh, education system. And you know, for the land, we need to protect the land. So you know, it's for the for the, uh, for the young generation's future mm. because our generation faced so many so much ch challenges with, from the government. Do you so, wish though that the no, no more questions, sorry. Too many questions. Too many questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but like I said, I'm looking forward uh, for this meeting to uh, come out uh, a true relationship with with the government and the treaty. It's, you know, the treaty was intended to have a a respect and honor relationship with with the partners of our, our treaty. That's the crown and the the governments and the First Nations and Canadians. And finally, when do you plan to end this? When do you plan to, to start eating? Well, um, I'll be observing in the meeting that 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 will take that will take place on January 11th. And if I don't um, if I don't um, see any positive result, then I'm going to go back to my hunger strike. So I'm not going to quit until there's positive results from that meeting.
you know, Chris, it looked like a really crisp, beautiful day, but very cold. I'm wondering, what are her living conditions like? I mean, she's in this teepee. Did you get inside and see how she's doing? We did, and that's exactly one of the reasons why we wanted to visit Victoria Island, which is on native land. We actually did get to go inside the teepee. That's uh, Danny, one of her spokespersons. So she's been living in this teepee and really sleeping inside. You can see it's very comfortable. Uh, it's surrounded by what, what he was calling sacred objects. What she does a lot inside the teepee is she says she prays. And uh, there's also a lot of discussion inside there. Uh, inside that teepee about how long this is going to take. She gets a lot of visitors, her kids and her grandkids uh, visit as well. Now, I should mention that there's been a lot of skepticism about what she's doing. People uh, saying that this, not, this is not really a hunger strike because she's taking fish broth, which is a very nutritious food. She also, is, uh, she also has a, a hotel room nearby where she takes showers and where her kids are staying. And so there's a lot of people saying, well, you you know, is this really what you're calling it? But as we saw uh, on Victoria Island is that she certainly has a lot of supporters who believe in what she's doing, who believe that it needed a face. This movement needed a person mm -hmm. to do Which this. Which was always what Occupy was lacking. Exactly. There wasn't one person exactly. who was leading the charge. Well, thank you for that.